Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. two American wax on leave in Paris, two girls with 24 hours in which to meet the most beautiful city in the world. One of them met the music of Paris, met merriment and romance. The other met adventure. In just a moment, our story, but first... Have you noticed the new trim whack uniform worn by the young women who are serving in the Women's Army Corps? This new uniform not only stamps the wearer as being smartly dressed... It also indicates that she is doing her part to keep America strong. If you're a young woman between 18 and 34 and can qualify, you are urged to do your part in making unity, strength, freedom a reality. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the Women's Army Corps today. Remember, you'll be doing your part in keeping America strong. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Once Upon a Leave. Station stop is Paris. The next station stop is Paris. Anne, huh? Anne, wake up! Huh? We're coming into the station, Anne. Oh, what? Dixie, Dixie, stop shaking me! I'll make Reveille. Reveille? Are you kidding? And we're in Paris. Paris. <laughs> Mademoiselles are satisfied with this room? Oh, it's a lovely room. Just beautiful. From this window, one can see the Champs-Élysées. And oh. from the balcony over there, the Eiffel Tower. Anne, the Eiffel Tower. Just like it looks on the postcards. Uh, uh, the Mademoiselles wish anything else? No, and no thank you. Everything is just wonderful. Oh, oh just a minute. Anne, how much do I tip him? Uh, well, since you're so in love with Paris, why don't you just give him a big kiss? Hmm? A lot of help you are. <laughs> uh, here you are, boy. If we need anything, we'll call. Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, bonne nuit, mademoiselle. And uh, may Paris treat you as generously as you have treated me. Well, what a sweet thing to say. And just because I tipped him a couple of francs. Uh, yes, he was being just darling, I'm sure. Oh, uh, Dixie, hand me that small suitcase. Hmm? I think I put my nightie in with my other uniform. And, Dennis, you can't be serious. Hmm? You're not going to bed. Not now. Do you care to make a bet on that point? But, Anne, we only have 24 hours. 24 hours, and then it's back to London. Back to Reveille and inspection and morning reports and... Anne, this is Paris. Mm -hmm, just like on the postcards. Uh, hand me that suitcase. Well, maybe you're going to bed, but I'm not. I'm going to enjoy my leave. I'm going to have onion soup and see Paris from the Eiffel Tower. Maybe I'll go to the Opera House. Or maybe I'll sit at a table at one of those darling little street cafes. And a tall, dark, handsome man will come up and toss a handful of diamonds in your lap. Oh. Huh? Mm -hmm. No thanks, Dixie. Not tonight, anyway. I'm still going to bed. All right. Go to bed. Sleep 24 hours for all I care. 
That's the trouble with you, Anne. You don't know how to enjoy yourself. You never have any fun. Nothing exciting ever happens to you, and nothing ever will. Good night, Dixie. We'll go sightseeing in the morning. Sightseeing? How exciting. How very exciting. <laughs> trying to get into the room. Oh, where's that light switch? Oh, nice place to leave a suitcase. Oh, that's better. D Dixie, is that you? Oh, wait, wait, just a minute. I'm trying to get the door open. <gasps> what do you want? Why have you been trying to get into my room? Val Valjean chased, chased Valjean. All good tonight. They go tonight. Tonight? What goes tonight? What are you trying to say? Please. No. No. Please. I, I did not know. I did not know. <gasps> oh. Blood. It's blood. The back of his shirt. Soaked in blood. <laughs> Seventy-first MP headquarters, Sergeant McDonald speaking. Yes? Who? Corporal and Dennis. Uh-huh. What did you say? Yes, we'll be right there. No, we'll take care of everything. What was the name of that hotel again, Corporal? Les Miserables. Yeah, I got it. Stick tight. We're on our way. This is Lieutenant Gordon, Corporal. How do you do, Corporal? And maybe you'd better tell him exactly what happened. Well, I... I was in my room asleep. I was suddenly awakened by somebody knocking at the door. I thought it was my roommate. I opened the door and... a boy stumbled into the room. It was the bellhop who had carried up our bags this afternoon. He tried to tell me something and then... <sighs> Can I get you some water, Corporal? No, no, I'm all right. He tried to say something, and then he suddenly gave a sort of choked cry and fell to the floor at my feet. I looked down, and the back of his shirt was soaked in blood. I didn't dare touch him, but I'm sure he was dead. Hmm. I think you'd better take us up to your room now. Yes, it's this way at the top of the stairs. Oh, Sergeant. Go through the downstairs and see if you can collect the owner of this place. We'll go on up. I locked my door when I came downstairs to phone. You always read about no one being allowed to touch the body in mysteries. <laughs> Good girl. Your roommate hasn't come home yet? Oh, no, I don't expect her for another hour or so. Dixie loves having a good time. Whenever we're stationed near a new city, she can't wait to go out and explore it from stem to stern. Here, let me help you with that, dear. No, no, it's all right. I think I've got it now. Oh, there we are. Hi. Hey, Corporal Dennis, you sure this is the right room? What? Of course I'm sure. There's my suitcase. That's my raincoat on the chair. My things on the dresser. There seems to be only one thing missing. The body. But when I left, he was lying right there by that chair. His arms were stretched out and his fingers almost touched the legs of the chair. Lieutenant, you must believe me. There was a boy in this room and he was dead. I saw him die. You said the back of his shirt was blood-soaked. Seems strange that there wouldn't be any stains on the rug. I just don't understand it. Look, you certainly don't think that I'm trying to play a trick on you. And... It, it just couldn't have been a dream. It was too real. It was much, much too real. Well, 
I think you better come down to headquarters with me, Corporal Dennis. We'll make a full report of exactly what has happened. Yes, yes. I'll get my coat, Lieutenant. Do you mind repeating what the boy said, Corporal? I want to make sure I have it correctly. As I told you before, I can't tell you exactly because he was in such pain that he couldn't speak very clearly, but I heard the word Valjean and something about going tonight. And then he seemed to be remembering the moment when he'd been shot. He screamed, please don't, I didn't know. And that's when he fell to the floor. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Sergeant? Uh, I think we've got everything now, Lieutenant. You still don't believe me, do you? Well, it is a rather fantastic story, Corporal. I'd like to believe you. I see no reason why you'd lie. But no corpus delicti. Isn't that the term they use? If the boy doesn't show up at the hotel in the morning, we'll go to work. If I only knew why his body disappeared and how. I went directly to the lobby. Nobody passed me either way while I was phoning. The back door of the place was locked and bolted from the inside. Hmm. Very neat problem, Corporal Dennis. Well, we'll send some men over in the morning and go through the place with a fine-tooth comb. Maybe they'll be able to turn up something. But tomorrow may be too late. He said they're going tonight. Since we don't know who's going or where, I think everything will wait until morning, Corporal. Well, Sergeant McDonald, will you drive the Corporal back to her hotel? No, thank you. It isn't far, and I'd much rather walk. I think the fresh air might do me some good. It's a little late for walking, Corporal. It's almost 3 o'clock. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I, I must admit that I'm as confused as you by the entire situation, Corporal Dennis. Let's hope we can clear it up in the morning. My leave is up tomorrow night. I'll be leaving for London in the afternoon. Well, I'll talk to you before then. You can be sure. I wonder what Dixie will say about all this. Good night, Corporal. Oh, Corporal. Yes? Paris is a very old city. Over 2,000 years old. She's seen a lot of good times and a lot of bad times. She's heard the tumbrils rolling through the streets, carrying the aristocrats to the guillotine. She's heard the German boots and American tanks. She has a lot of hidden secrets, which a lot of people would like to know. But she keeps them to herself. For all we know, what happened tonight was one of those secrets. <laughs> I didn't mean to wax poetic, but you see, I was born in Paris. And as much as I love her, she's much too tricky for me. Well, I guess she is for me too, sir. Well, thanks. And good night. Good night. Mademoiselle? Mademoiselle Corporal? Uh, yes. What we, is it? We are looking for an hotel, and we are lost. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know about any of the hotels. I've only been in Paris a few hours. Uh, this hotel is called Les Miserables. <gasps> uh, I've never heard of that hotel. I'm afraid you have, oh, Mademoiselle. Let go of my arm. I advise you not to try anything. Now, get in the car. You, you can't do this. The American authorities... The American authorities will have no idea of what has happened, I can assure you, since you will not be here to tell them. You can't force me into that car. You can't. I am very sorry, mademoiselle. Get going. We have very little time left. Everything must go tonight. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Once Upon a Leave. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Young woman, how about your future? Does it include an interesting and important job? A job that'll take you to the exciting places of the world. Places where tomorrow's history is being made today. Right now, young women like yourself are urgently needed. Here's an opportunity for you young women of America. An opportunity to get in step with the smartest. 
Today, the rapidly expanding Women's Army Corps, a proud newcomer on the team of defense, needs qualified young women between the ages of 18 and 34. This is your chance to do an important job. The pay is good, with excellent prospect of rapid advancement. Why not check with your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today? You'll find that it's easy to get in step with these proud American women who are serving their country in the Women's Army Corps. And now your Army and your Air Force present the second act of the proudly we hail production, Once Upon a Leaf. <laughs> Yeah, come in. Lieutenant Gordon, sir? Something on your mind, Sergeant? It's about that girl, Lieutenant, the whack corporal. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been thinking about what she told us, about the body and all. I have too, Sergeant. She seemed like such an intelligent girl. I, I just can't believe she just dreamed up the whole thing. I was trying to pull a gag on us. No, I don't either. I'm a little worried, Lieutenant. I think I should have gone back to the hotel with her, maybe hung around the lobby until morning. For all we know, the murder she told us about may be just the beginning of a lot of trouble, even danger to her. Suppose we check the hotel and make sure she's all right. Yeah, she left me the number. It's on this slip of paper. All right, let me have it a minute, will you? This is Lieutenant Gordon. Will you get me a hotel called Les Miserables? The number is Elysee 4587. Yeah, I'll hold on. There's something so fishy about this whole thing. What happened to the body? How was the boy killed and why? Well, at the moment, Sergeant, I'm more concerned about Corporal Dennis. She's our responsibility. The murdered boy belongs lock, stock, and barrel to the French police. Oh, yes, hello. Les Miserables? Well, this is Lieutenant Gordon, 71st MP headquarters. Has Corporal Dennis returned to the hotel? Oh, how long ago? Oh, fine, fine. No, 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 don't disturb her now. I'll call again in the morning. Thank you. Oh, she came in about ten minutes ago and went directly to her room. Well, that's one worry off our shoulders, then. Say, Lieutenant, have you got a copy of Les Miserables I could borrow for a little while? Oh, yeah, I believe I do. Wait a minute. Let's see. It should be right here, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, here's an English translation, a condensed version, but it'll give you the whole story of the whole book. Why, what's on your mind? Mm, nothing much. Just a little idea. Let me look through that story. I want to find out a few things about Les Miserables and this joker, Valjean. Sit down, mademoiselle. And be advised not to try anything foolish. What is this place? It smells and it's wet. You are obviously not very well acquainted with Paris. We are in an abandoned tunnel, which runs directly under the hotel. My hotel? Or shall we say our hotel? Michel, where is Emil? He'll be down soon. He's minding the desk. We have not much time. We must leave before dawn. Otherwise, somebody might question the convoy. I think we should wait. After what happened earlier tonight, the police may be on guard. I think not. The American MP did not call them. We must go tonight. I have promised delivery. Push back the doors, Michel. Perhaps you are right. <gasps> you see something familiar, mademoiselle? They're army trucks. How did you get them? We, uh, shall we just say we... Borrowed them from your most generous transportation corps. They're stolen trucks. You're taking them out of Paris to sell them on the black market. Ooh, Mademoiselle adds two and two with great ease. You'll never get away with it. They'll catch you. Do you take me for a fool? The boy got cold feet. He was afraid. He didn't want to be caught by the police. He thought we only had one truck. We have three, and he would have to drive with us. And that's when he tried to run away. Like Jean Valjean, he tried to escape. He ran, and 
Then suddenly, he stumbled and fell. You shot him. He crawled through a small air shaft and got back into the hotel. He went to your room for help. He knew you would call the military police. And while I was downstairs, you carried his body back through the shaft and changed the rug with the bloodstains. And we will dispose of it and the body when we reach the outskirts of Paris. You shot that boy. He will not talk to the police. Michel, go get Emil. We will leave now. And uh, give me that rope. I'll make sure that we have no trouble from our little friend. Everything is understood. I will drive the first truck. I will keep our guest with me in the front seat. If we should pass any American MPs, they will think we are authorized civilians and that the corporal is in charge. And uh, mademoiselle, uh, do not be so foolish as to scream. You want me to take the second truck? Oui. And Emile the third. Stay very close, within 40 yards. I will take us through the city and on the road to Lyon. Our rendezvous is at 8 in the morning, 700 kilometers from the village of Boulage. It is 3.45. We will leave now. Emil is ready. Start your engines and let them warm up. I hope you are comfortable, mademoiselle. Now we will go. When the MPs find I haven't returned to my hotel... Uh, that will not be before 10 or 11. Uh, they called. And Emile informed them that you were sound asleep. He is so considerate. My roommate will... And she is sound asleep, too. If I could just... Mademoiselle, sit still. We're moving off. Follow me closely through the tunnel. A most educational tour you will have, mademoiselle. It is as though we were stepping back through the years to the time of Les Miserables. A very romantic thought, is it not? They had very effective prisons, too, in those days, and still do. Such a shame that I won't be able to see them, mademoiselle. Pick up the speed now. In just a few minutes, we will be out to the tunnel and into the open streets, and then... Oh, oh. Let go of that wheel, you fool. Pull up, pull up, or I'll turn us into the wall. Let go of that wheel, or I'll... Oh, I told you. Let's see you get that truck out of here. I warned you. <laughs> Keep your head down, Corporal. Those other jokers may be armed, too. Well, it's entirely the sergeant's idea, Corporal Dennis. He thumbed through my copy of Les Miserables and decided there must be a tunnel under the hotel. Then everything was simple. We got one of the old men in the neighborhood to show us the tunnel entrance. And just as we started down, we heard the trucks coming. I'm certainly glad you arrived when you did. I think Andre fully intended to add a second murder to his list for the night. I'm sure he did. Well, it's been a long night. I think we should all try to get a little sleep. You turned the other men over to the French police? Yes. Yes, we found the missing body in one of the truck lockers. Uh, look, Lieutenant, if you don't mind, I'd like to drive the corporal home this time. <laughs> and this time the corporal accepts. There's nothing like a nice, quiet 24-hour leave in Paris. I was going to wake you up last night when I came in and tell you everything that happened. But I was so tired, I just fell into bed and dropped Come on, off. Dixie, it's 2 o'clock. Our train leaves in an hour. Oh, Anne, I had the most divine time. If only you could have been with me. I went into the Red Cross Columbia Club for donuts and a sandwich, and I bumped right into a boy from my hometown. 
I always thought he was a stick, but you should see him now. Put your blouse on the chair over there. Oh, just throw it into your bag for me mm. like a sweet child. Anyhow, this boy, his name is Bill something, and he's a sergeant in the Air Force, and we almost fell into each other's arms. We had dinner at such a wonderful little cafe, and then we went dancing. You see my other glove, Dixie. And we walked through Paris and climbed the long hill to Sacre Coeur. Isn't that your glove on the bureau? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And the church was ghost white in the moonlight, Anne. Absolutely ghost white. Oh, why can't our leave last longer? Well, we might just as well go downstairs and check out now. Well, maybe we can come back again soon. At least before Bill's transferred again. Oh, but Anne, you've let me chatter along without letting you get a word in edgewise. You sure you have our tickets? Mm -hmm. Right in my bag. Uh -huh. Oh, Anne, I'm sorry you didn't have a better time. Looks like I had all the fun and excitement. Well, but at least you had a good rest. You did sleep well last night, didn't you? Um, well, as a matter of fact, I didn't. What? You probably won't believe this. I was in bed and asleep. Uh-huh. It was around 2 o'clock and I suddenly heard somebody knocking on the door. Yeah? I got up opened it, and, uh, oh, skip it. Let's go get a taxi for the station. Of course, if you don't want to tell me what happened, you don't have to. I was just interested, that's all. It was nothing, Dixie, believe me, nothing at all. Come in. Hi, Anne. Oh, Sergeant. Can I give you a lift to the station? Anne, are you sure nothing happened last night? <laughs> brief word to young women. Why not get an early start with a job that gives you the feeling of being of real service to your country? You'll enjoy that feeling in the Women's Army Corps, and you'll be doing a job that'll be a little different every day. You'll be getting the finest technical training in the world in the career field in which you are best qualified. So don't let opportunity pass you by. Remember, today, young women between the ages of 18 and 34 can best serve their nation by working side by side with the men of the services. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting service and get all the details today. You are urgently needed. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.